Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it has been a while since I've made a video. Over the past month I have tried so hard to film this video because I just want to basically have this video as a bit of like a FaceTime with you guys. Like I want you to feel like you're chatting to your bestie. You're getting life updates from your bestie. I've tried to film this video about four times over the past three or four weeks but I've gone to do it either out of anger, spite, frustration or simply when I've not been in the right headspace to speak about certain things and I really don't want to sugarcoat anything with you guys so I've waited it out and now I feel like I'm in the perfect mindset environment to kind of just chat to you about everything that's been going on because when I tell you my life has been a roller coaster it's been tough it has been so tough it's been mentally tough it's been physically tough but we're going to chat about it we're going to chat about it and hopefully it'll help some of you going through similar situations to me as well but before i do start talking i need some food in my system and i'm so excited because i have partnered up with hello fresh and if you've not tried hello fresh before then what are you doing because the quality of the food is genuinely like restaurant food whenever a friend or a relative comes around and i cook my hello fresh for them they think i'm a chef so thanks hello fresh today i'm going to be cooking the chicken fried rice i was really in the mood for something like what's the word like thick like I don't know. So I'm going to be cooking the chicken fried rice today and on the back it gives you the step by steps on how to cook it. It's so quick and easy. This one for example takes 20 minutes and as a mum that's all you want. That's all you want. You want a quick meal which is going to taste delicious as if you're at a restaurant. You know what I'm so excited for as well? On HelloFresh they have so many like cozy home cooked type of meals so it's perfect for winter because when I've been on my daily walk with the kids I can just come back have a cozy meal it's not going to take hours on end. It's so quick and delicious. Also, they make it super easy for you because here you can see the number 13. So what I'm going to do now is go to the fridge, get the bag with the number 13 on, and then all my ingredients are there. So I've got the bag with number 13 on. Now I'm just going to do some preparation and then make my chicken fried rice. chicken are currently frying off but I just wanted to speak to you a little bit more about HelloFresh because since I've become a single parent I have found that I need to budget my money so much better than I did before and by using HelloFresh I know exactly what I'm spending a week on HelloFresh so I don't need to worry like about money when I'm going to the supermarket because HelloFresh gets delivered straight to your front door all the ingredients are there for you all measured out for the servings that you've selected on the website. For example, two servings, three servings, four servings, etc. Completely depends on how many people are in your family. But you get to choose, obviously, the servings, if that makes sense. And you can see specifically how much you're spending. I'm so excited for like the winter meals, like pasta bake and pies, like shepherd's pie. Oh no, I love cottage pie personally. Cottage pie is the winner. But all them home cooked meals around winter, getting cozy in my fluffy pajamas, no. I'm so excited and it's a bonus as well because Delilah loves HelloFresh just as much as me so that's always a win. <gasps> My rice, one sec. Baby, you give me ice and fire. This looks so yummy. I've not tried it yet. I was going to. I was very tempted. But I thought I'd do a reaction on my camera. Oh, it's so hot. It smells unreal. This is absolutely delicious. I do have a discount code for you all. All the information is on screen now and I will leave the link in the description down below if you do want to give it a go. I promise you, you won't regret it. Also, you can put your subscription on hold as well. So if you're going away on holiday, you could just pause it, skip a week. It's amazing. Mm. So the link is in the bio. Right, I'm not going to lie to you. It has been a few days since I last spoke to you. Something came up and I just wasn't in the mood to film. But I'm back. I'm back and I'm ready to talk. I think so I think I did mention this at the start of the video that I've tried to film this so many times but I've just not known what to say and what not to say but then I saw a quote the, the other day and it was like you know when people tell you like you should stay quiet or just don't talk about it blah 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 but then like if by me staying quiet it's like whose peace I'm actually keeping it's not my own if anything by me speaking out about things and by me sharing my journey and my experiences and stuff like that I'm genuinely doing it to 
make other people feel heard as well because I know I post a lot about my life but there's also a lot that I don't show as well. Um, but the things that I do choose to show is relatable things that people, what other people are going through or have been through as well. I'm not even joking you. There was a recent incident and the response from so many people, like hundreds of people who can relate is just mind blowing. And that's why I do what I do. I have seen a couple of comments recently being like, um, are you just doing this to get his attention off? Are you... Like, why are you putting this out on the internet? I'm putting it out on the internet. One, because I want to. Two, because it's my life. And three, it's my social media. Four, it's because people can relate to it. People people look up to me and respect me a lot more because of how open I genuinely am. And, you know, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything either. Like, I'm not Willy Wonka, do you know what I mean? If you're watching this and you don't like how open I am or you follow me on my social media and you don't like me speaking about my life, then just unfollow me like just unfollow me it makes no difference to me and it's not deep i am here to inspire other women to tell my story and even if it helps one person that's all that matters to me so obviously because i've gone to film this video multiple times over the past month or so i have posted on my instagram story a q a box for you guys to ask some questions so i have made note on like i made note on my phone from all of them about the most common topics and questions i'm not necessarily going to do it as a q a because i want like i said i want it to be like a bit of a facetime catch up type of video um so some things might just lead on to other things and yeah it's just basically going to be a bit of a catch up really so the most common thing was was the father of my children at the birth of frankie the answer to that is no he wasn't at the birth but he did come and see us both a couple of hours after and then left but there was an incident at the hospital. I did make a TikTok about this. Um, do you know what I mean? Like there's certain stuff where I don't really know if I should be speaking about it or not, but it's happened and I can't change what's happened. But yeah, I am confident and comfortable speaking about this, so I'm gonna. Yes, he came to the hospital to see us, but no, he wasn't at the birth. My mum was my birth partner, my one and only birth partner, and it was such a relaxing, experience just having my mum there like there was no pressure no stress and we actually had a really good time during the whole hospital stay um but i was after i gave birth to frankie um he was on facetime to his mum she wanted to talk to me passed me his phone and then i see a message at the top saying are you done i was like are you done what like i read that and i was like I was just gobsmacked. I was just gobsmacked. Um, like an experience which should have been lovely just got destroyed by one text message. And yes, yeah, some people might argue that, well, it's your own fault if that's getting in your head. But at the end of the day, I gave birth a couple of hours before. A girl had messaged him saying, are you done? And it turns out that he was with this girl 10 days before I gave birth. And it was like, but obviously at this moment in time i didn't know that he had actually met her at this point and if anybody remembers that tiktok that i uploaded and then immediately deleted within like 30 seconds or something the screenshot of him on facetime to the girl that he sent me whilst i was pregnant it was her it was her and when this message came up on my phone i just passed him his phone back and that was kind of confirmation in my head that i was so done with it because i didn't kick off like i found out more stuff recently which like I'm annoyed at myself that I didn't just send him home and pack it, like tell him to leave basically from the hospital because I, like looking back now he didn't deserve to be there um the disrespect is mental like I left that relationship to get out of the consistent cycle of being disrespected like it was just a cycle of like it was just a constant cycle of being disrespected then in making me feel like he does love me and then he'd just be horrible and it was just a constant cycle and I left that relationship to get out of the cycle but believe it or not almost six months down the line I'm still part of that cycle and it's so mentally exhausting I can't even stress to you like it is horrific and anyone who's been in that situation or is currently going through it like you'll be able to understand especially when kids are involved like if I had left him and kids weren't involved it would have been a case of simply blocking him removing him never seeing him or speaking to him again but when there's children involved like things have changed recently but like for the time that we haven't been together I've had to speak to him I've had to see him and I know it's my choice for him 
to like it was my choice to continue speaking to him and continue facetiming him with the kids and meeting up with him with the kids and stuff like that um but looking back now i sh I, I wish i had have cut contact sooner and i say i wish i'd have cut contact sooner it's because recently i have made the decision to go no contact full stop it was not an easy decision in the slightest but I don't I don't want my kids to have a part-time dad I don't want my kids to like grow up and think it's okay for a guy to disrespect them or for someone to disrespect them in general and as the mother to my children I don't want them thinking it's okay for someone to disrespect their mother because that might teach them to disrespect me and I'm their mother I'm the one who puts food on the table puts a roof over their head pays the bills buys the milk buys the food takes them out on activities and stuff like that like do you know what I mean I don't want a part-time dad and I don't want a dad for my children who just post them on social media for validation of other people to act like dad of the year like it's not like that and I'm being this open about this situation right now because what he has done to me has genuinely destroyed me and I was healing I was getting on with my life and then he came back from Cyprus and then he tries to get back with me and he tries to like sell me this dream that he sold to many other girls because they've told me and it's just like i don't understand how someone could be that way but the other night his mum texted me saying that i need to do my research on postnatal depression hon i was diagnosed with it by the doctor like i'm not being funny who are you to tell me to do my research on postnatal depression so oh god i just turned you sorry lily just rang me I don't even know what I was up to then. Like there's so much going on in my head. Like so much going on in my brain. And it's just like, I'm at that point now. Was I talking about the no contact thing? I don't know, but yeah, that wasn't an easy, I think it was, I don't really know. But yeah, I decided to go no contact and so many people have suggested to do that for so long. But in my head, I don't, I didn't want my children growing up to not know the dad, but when Frankie was three weeks old, he went to Cyprus for what he said was a holiday. Came back five weeks later. Frankie's now then eight weeks. The day he came back, he booked a hotel in Manchester for two nights. And we saw him like for the two days he was here. Um, and then he's not seen them again for another two weeks. And it's like, I don't want I don't want my children to have a part-time dad like being a parent is a responsibility it, the, the children aren't picking mates you can't pick and choose them when you want to see them or when you want to support them like that is not how it works and obviously I know I completely understand there's two sides to every story but I'm telling you now I would love I would absolutely love to know what his story is because everything that I've told you is nothing but the truth it's all facts it's all facts yes don't get me wrong many times he's tried to come running back to me but I knew he would I knew he would because I'm not pregnant now like I think these guys forget you're not pregnant forever you're pregnant for nine months nine months and it's like I went to an event the other day and he messaged me saying have you gone with a guy and I said no I said no why because i didn't i went with my sister and he was like well who's that guy's hand on your story i said that's my sister and she was like he's rude and so i said you're rude and it's like and then i had to send a selfie that was with my sister to prove myself and he keeps saying like have you spoke to lads on nights out and stuff like that no i haven't like i genuinely haven't but even if i did i'm single so what like so what i'm single i'm a free i'm a free woman i'm a free woman and I don't need to explain myself to anybody. I'm a single woman. Oh, it it winds me up. It really winds me up. But yeah, I think I think I've already spoke about the message that his mum sent to me last night. There's so much more to it. But he knew. No, sorry, she knew. So when I was pregnant with Frankie, I opened up to his mum quite a bit, and <laughs> she knew about him being in the Netherlands, sleeping with that girl. She knew that. 10 days before I gave birth, the day I was in hospital with reduced movements, he was doing dirty work, like just doing dirty. Oh, but that's another thing. So when I passed him his phone back in the hospital, when she texted me saying, are you done? 
are you done? Imagine actually having the cheek as a as a mother herself to message him saying, "Are you done?" When he see me hours after giving birth and meeting his son for the first time. But anyway, she's irrelevant. Um. Yeah, his mom knew about that. His mom knew about that. But like the things that his mom has said to me, like when I was pregnant with Delilah, she kicks off with me that I didn't eat her fajitas that she cooked me. I was pregnant, I wasn't hungry, I was really picking my food, I didn't eat some fajitas, and she kicks off with me about that. Like, oh god, no wonder he's the way he is. Like, it must run in the family or something. So another thing was, who looks after your kids when you go out? So I actually don't go out that much. Like. I rarely do go out. If I do go out, it is, I've been on one night out with my best friend after having Frankie. And whenever I do go out, um, a member of my family will look after my children, whether it's my mum, my dad, or my sisters, that's pretty much it. Or my auntie, if I need to like do something in the daytime and my mum's not around, something like that. But like when I do go out at night or have been out at night, the kids are more than likely in bed. I think I've been to an event, but that's another thing, it's events, like, my job is social media, like, I am on social media, so part of that is attending events. Um, and I'm just extremely grateful to have the support system around me because I'm not even joking you, without my family, I would be so screwed. I am extremely, extremely, extremely grateful to have the family and friends that I do because without them, god forbid the state i would be in like they have dug me out of some serious serious ruts um something which i might end up speaking about one day but at this moment in time it's not the right it's not it's not right for me so i'm not going to speak about it just yet one because i'm embarrassed two because it's just major like it, it's it's not good um well it is good to a certain extent but yeah that's enough on that but anyway yeah my family would look after my kids if i do go out they're extremely extremely supportive and as well i've only been out a couple of times like i want to say three times um i went to two events last week for obviously social media um, both at night, so the kids are in bed anyway. So all my family got to do is just sit and chill in the house. Um, my mum does. My mum has started recently having the kids every Tuesday for me to allow me to catch up on like work, to like do worky bits, to run errands and stuff like that. And that has really, really, really helped my mental health massively. Speaking of mental health, um, I have been diagnosed with postnatal depression. I was diagnosed with that at my eight-week postnatal checkup. I was referred to the mental health like department thing in my area. That was two weeks ago now. I'm still yet to hear anything, but I'll, I need to actually chase it up today to be fair. So I'm gonna make sure that I do that. Um, every day is up and down. If you don't already, make sure you are following my TikTok because I do tend to kind of be a bit more in the moment about my postnatal depression on there. And some people kind of have been commenting saying that like, why why are you showing this side? Blah blah blah. I'm showing this side because that's my life. Like that is if that's what I'm going through, I'm gonna share that. And a lot of people who have postnatal depression kind of hold back from getting help. And by me getting help has already put my mind at ease so much because I know I'm not crazy, I know I'm not losing my mind, and I know that it's okay to feel this way. And I spoke to a couple of other people, other mums who have been through what I have, and it's so nice to be able to relate to somebody and even if this even if by me sharing my postnatal depression experience and journey helps one person that's all that genuinely matters to me because sometimes you don't even know you've got it like sometimes you don't even know you've got it and i didn't know i had it until i spoke to the doctor like i told her about my relationship issues i told her about how i'm feeling overwhelmed there's so much going on like how repetitive being a mother can be at times and don't get me wrong <clears throat> I would never, ever, ever change being a mum for the world because those children, my children, Delilah and Frankie, I would be so lost without them. Like, I adore them from the bottom of my heart. I would do anything to protect them. Like, they are, they're my children and I would never, ever, 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 like, put them at risk or, 
like I just love them so much and they have no idea how much they've saved me as a person like they've changed my life for the better another thing was how is co-parenting going um that's non-existent I think I've basically made that clear I've got no contact as destroying as it is like I never wanted it to get to this point I've been I've tried my best so so hard to remain civil but the disrespect still continues we'll be getting along being well like being proper civil and then it'll be like we're not together you know we're not in a relationship you know and I'm like yes I know I'm the one who ended it I'm the one who ended it um what else does he say like or if we're getting along and he, he, he'll just cause an argument or he'll just be a it'll just be a knob and then turn it around i mean it's like what are you doing like are you okay like oh my god and i'm the one who needs therapy <laughs> i'm the one who needs therapy which he's contributed to and I know that's a strong statement to me, but with everything that he put me through during my pregnancy, I should have left him in my first pregnancy when I was pregnant with Delilah, when I caught him messaging another girl at the side of me in bed whilst pregnant with Delilah. Many other times that I should have left him, I went going, I kept going back, kept going back, kept going back. But now I know that I kept going back so many times and that's because he used to sell me this dream and he's but I'm, I'll change, I'll change. No, you won't change. You just won't change. And if you're in a position like me, they're not gonna change. They're not gonna change. They'll, they might change for like, a, like three days or something. They won't change. <sighs> Another question. Are you gonna start dating soon? Um, I'm not looking for no one. I'm very, very content with me, myself, my children. Um, obviously, if I met someone, I meet someone. I'm not looking for it but if it came I wouldn't turn it away I'm a very very affectionate person like I love feeling loved I love being treated well I love being I just love the feeling of being loved you know what I mean and I know what I bring to the table and I'm, I promise you now I'm not gonna settle for less than I deserve because I know my worth I know what I'm capable of I, I don't need a man I don't want a man but if it happens it happens have you got any plans for the rest of this year honestly yes i am so so excited so it's november very soon and i'm just so excited for christmas yeah it's my first christmas as a broken family but i know it's going to be the most special and the best christmas yet because in throughout december i've got so many like activities planned that i'm going to do with the kids some trips that are happening and i'm so excited like i am beyond excited for christmas we booked the Santa special train. If you're from like the Lancashire area, book the. Make sure you book the Santa special train. Me, me, my mom, my dad, my two sisters, Lily's boyfriend Callum, and obviously Delilah and Frankie are going on that train in December. We're also going to Prague for three nights as a family as well, and I think I might go away for New Year. And I'm doing Vlogmas as well. I'm doing Vlogmas again this year. I did do it last year. I was very proud of myself. I actually completed it. This year, I am going to do it as well. It might be a little bit more difficult because I've now got two kids and finding the time to edit and stuff might be a bit time consuming. But I'm gonna make sure that I do start pre-filming towards the end of November so then I've got content ready to go for December. So I don't need to put too much pressure on myself editing. But I'm so excited. Like, I'm really, really, really excited. But on that note, I have done enough rambling. I'm about to go home because I've got my friends coming around with their little babies and children. And I'm so excited. It is Halloween as you're watching this. So happy halloween happy halloween please make sure that you have subscribed to my youtube channel if you haven't already i really do appreciate all of your love and support recently it does not go unnoticed i wish that i could reply to every single dm that i get but make sure that you stay tuned for another video i am going to try my best to start being a little bit more consistent with youtube again and um, because i know you guys love it and also let me know what videos you would like to see because yeah i'm a bit clueless if i'm being completely honest i've still got baby brain but anyway please do subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you very very soon bye